Thank you very much all for coming and saying thank you for having us here and, and hosting us. Um, I think anyone who has been living in Egypt or working on issues related to Egypt in the past two years would find that it's the professional, the personal, and the national all blur. And it's very difficult to separate them from each other. And in my reflection, I'm trying to make sense of this whole foggy, difficult two years and year and a half that we had this ordeal, the way I would think of summarizing what happened, it is really a battle between authoritarianism and the battle in the strife for applying the rule of law and standing up for human rights. And it's embodied in every single level and, 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 and on all events that happened and the details and the micro and the macro. And it is, it is also a difference between the length of dictatorship and the length of people who are ruling by authoritarianism and want to control the country by authoritarianism and the length of people who are for the principles of human rights and citizenship and equal rights for all. So for example, what what we did as Freedom House, just, just because it's very confusing for people, they, they don't know what we were doing and what kind of activities that we really we were punished for to an extreme punishment of five years in prison, is actually supporting the human rights in the country, supporting freedom of expression, expanding the space of freedom for people to speak out for themselves, to make sure that everyone has the right to hold the country and the government, those who are ruling the country and the governors accountable for their deeds. And, and for that, the other side of the story the way the authoritarian government see it, or even in the words of the prosecutor when he was interrogating me, he is saying, you're trying to defame the country. So these are two different perspectives. You're trying to show reality, you're trying to show the truth, and they see it as you're trying to defame the country. When we stand up for the rights of minorities and the right to have equal rights like everyone else in the country as equal citizen, they see it that as we are creating a sectarian rift. So you see there are two, two totally different perspectives of, of the world that we are living in if we think of Egypt in the past two years. This is the real problem. But this does not stop at us being punished and does not stop as an issue of uh, different perspectives because this difference in perspective costs lives. Two, year, two days ago, four Shiites were killed in their house and they were burned, they were, they were beaten up in Egypt. And this is the cost of stopping the work of organizations like us from doing their work. Imagine if Egypt had a strong, able and effective civil society without fear or intimidation by the government, standing up for getting the truth out there about what happened in that incident, standing up for the rights of the minorities of those people to be protected, standing up for holding those who commit crimes against minorities to be, to be held accountable and punished for their deeds. Imagine all this was there. I don't think that we would have been seeing all these incidents that cost people life. So the issue is not about the 43 of us or just the, the ordeal of international organization. The issue, it is bigger, on a bigger scale, on the issue of transitional to, transition to democracy in Egypt and also on the personal level, costing blood and life and, and the, the dignity of people and their strive for freedom. So this is, this is the story. When my former boss, Minister Faiza Abu Naga, came out in a press conference at the time of the, uh, when we were interrogated and raided, she, made it, she wanted to portray the issue is that these organizations are not working for the interest of Egypt and that we are working on issues that are not the priority. And she wanted to appeal to the sentiment of people and the needs of the poor. And she said like the international organization should be working on providing bread on the table of the poor. And this was very clever of her, but she forgot that these organizations were working for supporting the, the syndicates and the union, the labor union, to getting their rights, for the poor to demand their rights, for people to make sure that the funding that goes on 
bringing this bread is that is not being held by people who are corrupt and they are held accountable for that. So we're not working on elitist uh, foreign ideals out there in, in, and we're living in our bubble and she is trying to show it that as if that is all it, that we're ignoring the real needs of the Egyptian people. And the way we work at Freedom House with other organizations as well, we don't work by our own. We work with partnership with local partners. We support civil society organizations in Egypt so that they by themselves determine what their needs are, how they want to approach it, and what are the means that they need. So this is what we worked on. But she was actually what she did in that, uh, in that press conference along with the Minister of Justice revealing and talking about issues in details of a legal case and then they call it that it was an independent a legal case. Of course, obviously from such a press conference alone, it shows that it was not really uh, an independent legal case. But for what she did is a demonstration of the strive of every authoritarian regime is basically to isolate people who st the activists and the people who stand of the rights of the people from the rest of the public is try to isolate them basically by intimidating them and also isolate them by portraying them as people who are not relevant to the rest of the public. So these, this, these are the tactics that they made by which they, they prepared or created that pretext for our indictment and, and, and the charges that we had. On, and it's very ironic that what we were working for to support the people to protect from we were the first people who were subject to is that we were not well informed about our rights. On the first day when I was in the office and I remember like Bessem and Mohammed and my colleagues were, were there, uh, the police officers came and they said, we want to summon you for, to meet the, the prosecutor at the Ministry of Justice, but don't worry, you're not charged, you're not indicted, you're just there as a witness. And they just voluntarily they proposed to say this. And when I went to the prosecutor's office for the first time, I sat down and he said to, like he was dictating to his secretary to write, well, so the indicted Nancy O'Kill has arrived, the charged or an accused Nancy O'Kill has arrived, and we've given her the following charges. And again, I mean, like the whole process continued on of lack of clarity and lack of information of what we are being charged for because the first two charges that they gave us or gave me when I sat down, they said that I'm charged for operating an office without a license and receiving funding from a government with a, a foreign government without a license. But for the following six hours where he interrogated me continuously, all the questions were highly political. They had nothing to do with the with the administration of of the of the office that we're having and our registration process. And it was very easy for me to prove to him that we did not break the law at all, because the moment I arrived to Egypt, because I was living in England before then, and I went to Egypt after the revolution to take that post, and the first thing I did is that I went to the foreign ministry, understood exactly what is needed to register our office, and this is what we did and the requirements of the Egyptian by, by the Egyptian law, by the NGO law, is that in order for us to register, we have to open an office first, hire staff, have a budget and a plan, and then apply for registration. So basically what I was able to prove in the first half hour is that we were typically following the Egyptian law. But the next six hours were mainly about political motivation. Why are we issuing statements when uh, the police attacks protesters, for example, and what are our grounds? And like again, the answer came out easy because this is international human rights. It's not something specific to Egypt. It's not something that we are intentionally doing to breach the national security or sovereignty of Egypt. So it continued on like that, of course, Again, I mean, like it was very ironic that we were st trying to do to protect other people and support them. We were the first people to be affected with. I mean, one of one of the things that uh, the, the 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 way of intimidation and, and and threatening tone is like always saying that if I tweet or talk about this to anyone, I'm going to spend the night in jail. And he reminds me, it's like, oh, but you. You have two little kids, right? You have three-year-old twins. I mean, like, he's like always reminds me, like, you don't want to leave them, and it was like this whole issue of the way of the an embodiment of the culture of impunity, rather than that I am a person. I mean, like, if I broke the law, this is going to be your punishment. If not, so this was the whole process, and this was what we were. Um, 
facing every day in our in our lives and I'm sure uh, Yahya and Layla can tell more every one of us have uh, a different story but this is not again I mean what I want to say this is not a story about us not just about our suffering is just like it's a reflection of what's happening in the country overall what people are subject to and we are what we are trying to stand against thank you thanks